Hi, I'm Mark Rosano, founder and CEO of C6 Capital Holdings, coming to you from Primary Vision Network. Today is our favorite day. The Primary Vision Frack spread count comes out and it comes in at 134. So we had an increase of four from week over week. Uh, most of that gain was, was came from the Permian. Now, in the report that we put out today, if you can see in terms of kind of what we're guiding and what we're thinking in terms of growth going forward, the, the view is that we were going to get another about six to nine as we went through October. And here, you know, pulling through another three makes a lot of sense, which means that we'll probably get another three or up to about six as we go through the remainder of October. You know, we're really hearing and seeing a lot in the Delaware. Obviously, we've had some uh, some new mergers, which will will maybe bring some some capital back in or some adjustments, depending on what is going to be done. But the idea is really streamlining. Like the one that we just uh, we can talk about r- real quick before we go to the next slide. You know, when you look at Conoco and Concho, it's interesting because when you look at Conoco, Conoco has a, a very large. Uh, midstream component. They have their own splitters and upgraders, and they have direct lines really to different refining, but also the the um, the coast. And then we'll touch on what happened in Libya when we start talking about exports. And but at the same time, you know, Concho it had a lot of running room. They have a lot of contiguous acreage, and even though the Delaware does have a higher water contact and uh, a little bit lighter. Concho, uh, Conoco has that ability to kind of uh, use that. So it'll be interesting to see how, how this really starts to, to develop because just based on where we are in total Permian activity, we don't see it really going down. We do see it continuing to go up, but it's just a matter of, will it get more efficient? Will there be more dual stimulation? Will, you know, th- will we see some additional benefits in terms of just cost cutting that it's not really going to increase the overall efficiency in terms of recovery value, but just more so along the efficiency lines of just cost and bringing the overall cost down, you know, helping some of the economics. Just because as we sit at currently at 39.80, clearly we're going to need some help on cost. So now just to kind of put it into perspective, as we look at the last three months, you can see that we continue to grind higher. Uh, obviously, if, I mean, anyone who's been paying attention, I I didn't think we would be at 134 in October. I thought this was going to be more of a November event, but here we are. And uh, the idea is that when we look at the, the frac spread count and we look at how it really correlates with production, we're seeing that there's a 30, 60, 90 day lag, depending on where we are. And when you consider about how long it takes to complete a well, how long it takes to tie in, it makes a little bit of sense when you consider really ramping in October if you want to bridge a seasonal gap that it w- that usually comes into play between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And when we consider about eight to nine months, because the view is get through Q1, get through Q2, and then really look at what Q3 looks like, you have to bridge that decline curve. And that's really where we're starting to get back to, especially when you consider where we came from. So if we look at 2019, you know, you can see, obviously, we had that big drop off. And when we look at what is what is going to happen right now, we have a, a decent amount within the um, within natural gas. And just based on how Appalachia is looking and if uh, based on the report that we put out today, we think Appalachia is going to be fairly consistent through the remainder of the year with a, a decent amount of uh, new activity happening in the Haynesville. So it'll be interesting to see how this really kind of uh, ties in. But the, the big growth spot is going to remain Texas. That's going to be the bigger uh, component. Uh, in these numbers, on in the 134 this week, uh, we do have some one-offs and some fringe acreage. So some of that will come down. But it, again, the the bigger the bigger lion's share of where we're seeing these gains remains Texas, remains the Permian. So a lot of this growth that we've seen is sticky, and it's something that we think is going to remain really through the end of the year, regardless of where uh, crude prices are at this point. And while crude prices are important, it's 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 important to appreciate that they've already hedged a lot spe- specifically through the remainder of 2020. So this is really just tr- to try to keep some of this activity going and really bridge that gap as we get into um, into the new year. Now, before we sign off, uh, the, the one thing we wanted to touch on is Libya just because there was a big um, ratified ceasefire this morning uh, and they've opened the last two big uh, facilities, uh, uh, CIDR, and uh, Lanouf, and it's just important to appreciate just because those are two of the biggest um, 
ports specifically in that area. So by doing that, they really unlock the ability to, you know, by lift, lifting force majeure, it just means that we're going to see more uh, crude hitting the water. Right now, they're at about 550,000 barrels a day. Uh, the new guidance from the National Oil Company or NOC is saying that they're going to hit a million barrels within four weeks. So when we look at exports from the U.S., and we wrote about this in the in the report, just talking about how spreads have been really tight. And when we look at how the U.S. exports, it's really always driven based off of what happened previously. So we're exporting in October what we sold, you know, six to eight weeks prior. So the fact that we haven't really seen any new sales just because the spreads have tightened, we we had a, a big increase in loading capacity out of Norway. We have Nigeria that had a lot of spot cargoes, Iraq that had a lot of spot cargoes. So we saw some slowdowns in terms of where new U.S. exports are going to go. So we, as we get to the end of October, because right now October, we're filling a lot of Chinese and South Korean purchases. November slows down as we look at you know what is going to happen with U.S. exports. And then when we look at spreads, it, it's going to remain fairly low as we go into December, unless we get some meaningful price action that would kind of adjust that. Now, the problem is you know, Libya coming back a million barrels a day is going to be difficult because that's we, as we've talked about in the EIA show, and again in the Economy show, in the EIA show we talked about how uh, Italy and Spain have refiners that are ramping down. In the Economy show, we went through COVID cases increasing. You know what? What does that mean for the economy overall? And those it, those impacts are just going to say that okay, well, Libya is going to come back, but it's going to displace someone. So who is it going to displace? It's going to displace the U.S. It's going to displace Russia, Saudi Arabia. Iraq to a smaller extent, but then also Nigeria. So that just means that there's just now more crude that's going to have to compete and move into different directions, which is why we believe that as we go into the beginning of the year, you know, typically based on the OPEC plus agreement, we're supposed to get an increase of 2 million barrels a day. Will we get the 2 million barrel a day increase in production? Unlikely. It'll probably be something closer to a million, probably less, depending on how demand looks going into the, into the new year. And right now we had Iraq that officially announced an increase in production of 250,000 barrels. You know, in the EIA show, we talked about how they've been exporting about 220,000 a, uh, a day above where they're above September, which is a total of about 642,000 above target to give you an idea of where we sit in terms of non-compliance. So these are some of those issues. And now we have Australia announcing run cuts, uh, which is again, just going to put that's that's actually an interesting one because it's going to displace Malaysia and then Malaysian crew is going <clears> to <throat> going to have to find a place to go and if Angola can't go because Malaysia is going to could sell into China and if that happens then you know where's Angola going <clears throat> excuse me going to go where's Nigeria going to go and that's where we start to see some uh, some increases overall in uh, in just total floating storage and just where those spreads are going to go and the differentials. One of the other things that we saw come across was Nigeria cut their official selling price, especially as we go into November because they do have some some extra cargoes. We've seen some cargoes for Angola slip out of out of uh, November out of October into November and then deferrals from November into December. So it, it, there's just going to be a lot of pressure in the market, which just given based on where spreads are, this is just going to slow down U.S. exports. We did get some sales, so we will see some movements. It's not like it's going to go away, but it's just going to be pressure where, you know, last year we were averaging three, 3.2 million. Now it's something that we're, you know, as we go into the end of the year, it's going to be something closer to, you know, probably 2.4 to 2.7 million barrels a day, unless we get some big resurgence. But it's just going to be pressure overall, and this new supply is going to hurt. Now, why do, why do we talk about this? Well, where is this additional supply going to go, given the fact that we do have a lot of production? At this point, it's not a, a huge problem because we do have commercial storage available. Given it's very tight, there's there's a lot of it still in storage, especially in Cushing. But again, there's there's movements that can be made. And when we look at just the hedge profile, a lot of these guys have hedged themselves so that they have a certain bridge to get to you know, the new year. So thanks again for watching. Uh, you know, we have a decent, uh, a, a pretty big lineup coming up next week. We have another episode of Conversations with a very special guest, which we'll reveal on Monday. Uh, then on the we have our EIA show, the Economy show, and then obviously our favorite, the Primary Vision Frack Spread Count. And depending on timing, we might be able to get an OPEC show in there, but we'll probably try to wait 
uh, an extra week. And then if we can, we'll try to look at and do something, you know, a special segment, just like this past week, we did a special segment on, on poverty. We'll try to do something on uh, Biden and Trump and looking at, you know, if if uh, one gets elected, what does that mean for energy policy and what does that mean for the oil patch as we go into the new year? So thanks again for watching. I'm Mark Rossano, founder and CEO of C6 Capital Holdings, coming to you from Primary Vision Network. Have a great weekend.